This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. As the urban renewal vision continues to unfold on Grand Bahama, the government program is expanding to empower young people to become entrepreneurs while meeting an essential need just in time for back to school. As Joan Davis Rule reports, the Minister for Grand Bahama is predicting that this innovative initiative is just the beginning of greater things to come. It is a pilot program being introduced by Urban Renewal 2.0 here on Grand Bahama and one of the most economically depressed communities on this northern island. The Conley Club area, where the Pine Ridge Urban Renewal Center is being established as the hub for an innovative initiative, a life skills program that is setting a precedent in youth development and empowerment. For more than a week, 30 youngsters have been learning the theory of sewing and now they are about to put that training into action equipping them with the skills necessary to sew their own uniforms just in time for back to school. Minister for Grand Bahama and Member of Parliament for Pine Ridge, the Honorable Dr. Michael Dobble says this could very well be the beginning of light manufacturing. Uh, it's a program geared uh, to attract young women who are interested in the seamstress industry uh, to be a part of producing their own garments and also producing garments for their families. Uh, it's my understanding now that under the leadership of Ms. Major, who is in charge of the program, uh, our young people have already had the theory and now are constructing their own uniforms. I believe this is an excellent program and I'm certain uh, Ms. Michelle Rackley and her team will be putting this program to all the centers in Grand Bahama and hopefully throughout the country. Leading the Urban Renewal 2.0 charge here on Grand Bahama is Deputy Director Michelle Reckley. The program, she says, is a prime example of not giving a man a fish, but teaching him how to fish, hence promoting social and economic empowerment. Last year, we actually, our seamstress made the uniforms and we gave them to the students. After this process would have happened, we hope the next year that these girls would be able to teach a little sister or a neighbor or a cousin or a friend. It is so important for us to empower our people to empower themselves. And it starts at, at this young age where they can do for themselves and help others because it's not good all the time to have a hand me out or a hand me down. But when you sit, and you take that material, you cut that yourself, you pleat that yourself, you hem that yourself, and you know this is mine. I made this. This is a part of me. Among the urban trailblazers are instructor Dorothy Major and participants Nika Julian and Simone Gibson. I do it free of charge. Um, it's a way of giving back to the community, and um, I've always been taught always to help others and always to do whatever you can to assist wherever there is a need. And so here I am. <laughs> I feel good because, number one, mommy don't have to spend too much and I'm making it, so it's exciting. I feel good. Instead of we ran a little long skirt, I ran a good length skirt. Thank you, Urban Renewal, for preparing us for back to school. The goal of this pilot program by Urban Renewal is not only to establish it here on Grand Bahama, but establish it at Urban Renewal centers throughout the country. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Joan Davis Roll. A Bahamian consulting firm is spreading its wings and stepping into a new territory. Tonight, the president of the company is talking about this new initiative. Knowledge is power, and power gives one the ability to accomplish anything. It is against this backdrop that Benchmark Consulting Services has set out to empower anyone seeking higher learning. President Billy Bo says the company recently launched its e-learning platform, which focuses on personal and professional development. We have so many courses that we um, are available to offer to anyone, an individual who wants to enhance their professional or their career development. Um, we have courses for persons, even young people who want to um, understand doing a job search and resume writing, they can actually sit down at their computers and go through the entire content. They get um, an assessment, they get a certificate of completion, and the courses are really dynamic because there's um, multimedia, videos included, um, voiceovers, um, and they can actually email the instructor and say, hey, I have a question, and they get a response within 24 hours. Bo says they are focused on making learning affordable and accessible to all. Sometimes it's impractical for people to go to uh, a classroom. And if you're unemployed, then, you know, for instance, corporate 
companies, they have no problem having a trainer come in and train their employees. But if you're unemployed and you want to do training, but you can't really go to success or these other places, you know, that shouldn't hinder you from learning. So we, we did this because we wanted to fill that gap. She adds that this 21st century approach to learning was designed with the busy professional in mind. We're talking about something that's really going to supplement, I think, some of the training that happens in the classroom. But it'll take it a step further because you could be at home just sitting around and learning something. And this is really good quality content um, because that's one of our biggest, um, uh, we really believe that the training has to mean something. As Grand Bahama remains poised for an economic turnaround, Bo believes now is the time to prepare for opportunities on the horizon. I think we are in a place in the Bahamas or in Freeport, Grand Bahama, where opportunities will come up, but you have to be ready. And we, we really, really need to be on top of it. I heard uh, our, you know, the tourism board talk about all these wonderful things that are happening. This is the time now to learn about customer service. This is the time now to be prepared for when you see the increase in tourism here. So, um, and just being, you know, it's, I think you're absolutely correct. This is the time now to be ready. Jury selection began in the murder trial of well-known businessman Leslie Maycock today. Maycock was killed back in 2009 at the Hawksville Mini Mart during an apparent armed robbery. As Shashina Roll reports, there was a major challenge during the morning session. Ted Lise Jr. and Kadero Wallace, a.k.a. Kadero Miller, handcuffed together, entered the Supreme Court for what was expected to be the jury selection process on Wednesday morning. However, there was a bit of a challenge. Many of the jurors who were selected expressed to Justice Hartman Longley that they could not judge the case fairly because they either knew the victim, Leslie Maycock, or the father of the co-accused, Dudley Say Jr. Forty-five minutes later, the panel was still one juror short, and court was dismissed until this afternoon. As you may recall, back in 2009, police reports at the time indicated that two armed masked men entered the Hawksville Mini Mart, held the proprietor, Leslie Maycock, at gunpoint and demanded cash. During the ordeal, Maycock was shot in his stomach and was listed in critical but stable condition. He later succumbed to his injuries one week later. Dudley Say Jr. and Kadero Wallace, a.k.a. Kadero Miller, are both charged with murder and armed robbery. They pleaded not guilty during the morning session. Say is represented by attorney Simeon Brown and Wallace, a.k.a. Miller, is represented by Osmond Johnson. Justice Hartman Longley is presiding. The jury selection was expected to continue throughout the afternoon. Shashina Roll, ZNS Network News. Police in Abaco discovering what is suspected to be illegal drugs on Tuesday. According to reports, officers, while on patrol in the Dundas Town community, observed a group of men near a building acting in a suspicious manner. Officers stopped and the men fled the area. Reports say while searching the area, officers discovered a white plastic bag containing a white powdery substance suspected to be cocaine with an estimated street value of $25,000. No arrest was made in this matter. Investigations are continuing. Stay with us. There's more news after this. I Dolly Madison, Freeport's original home center. Rain or shine, there's one place that you can always depend on for household products that keep your home running smooth. Whether it's Ace Hardware, Housewares and Paint, or furniture and accessories from Rooms to Go, or Radio Shack Electronics. The one place that carries craftsman tools, tablets, routers, computer networking supplies, generators, and so much more is right around the corner on Queens Highway. That place is Dolly Madison Home Center. Rain or shine, open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Come on down! the Bellevue Business Depot, the back-to-school headquarters for the big cash giveaway. Spend $50 or more to win hundreds of dollars on the latest electronic notepad. 
get backpacks as low as $8, black and white books, geometry sets, calculators, and so much more. Spin the wheel of savings for extra prizes. OMG, I love Bellevue Business Depot. Chill out with a frozen drink from the Coffee Cafe. This back to school, drink, spin, and win. Why pay more when there's Bellevue Business Depot on Queens Highway? 352-8806. This portion of the news is brought to you by Segway Fun Day, August 16th at Independence Park. Enjoy Segway rides, batting cages, and paintball guns for the whole family. Welcome to Jags. Let me see what kind of prices y'all can get me today. You're going to the right place. Here at Jags, we don't charge any booking fees or agency fees. We definitely guarantee the lowest price on Belair Fast Ferry, Bahama Celebration, cars, and hotels. Say what? That means Jazz can save me some money today? Yes ma'am, our duty is to ensure that our customers receive the most affordable prices possible. Book now and save at Jags International located on Queens Highway 351-5244. This portion of the news is brought to you by New Life Natural Vegetation Cell Food Limited. Let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And new radio talk show coming to the ZNS Network. Have, have you seen a growth in your your business and your participation? Because a lot of people don't know these sporting events are actually going on. So with the right marketing tools, these events can definitely be bigger than what they are. Yeah, um, some ladies lose a lot of weight. A lot of people reach the goals that they were Back going in the for. day when your neighbor or someone from down the road could, could scold your child. Minding your you know, business said, with yeah. Davina Rutherford. bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. Today was a big day for a local tow operator. H. Forbes Charter Services commissioned several new vehicles during a special ceremony at Jubilee Cathedral. While proprietor Hadley Forbes is optimistic about the future of Grand Bahama, tonight he is expressing concern about a closed hotel property. I just hope and pray that um, someone, somewhere, would come and revive this property. And if it's not going to be revived, just take it down, open the road so we can um, do what we was doing before. Owner of H. Forbes Charter Services, Hadley Forbes, is talking about the depressed Royal Oasis property, which was closed for the past 10 years. His business office is located in the neighboring International Bazaar, and he says the once thriving hotel and casino was a vital component to his business. This property was the lifeline of my business in the past. And um, when the property just close this door, I just moved next door to the International Bazaar. And as you will see, the International Bazaar at one point looked like it is dying. But the Bazaar is going to come back in its glory as long as, as soon as they get their act together and realize that they have something that they can sell. Forbes Charter Services commissioned several new vehicles that will be added to a fleet of almost 30. This tow operator agrees with many who believe the closure of the main highway in front of the Royal Oasis was a bad idea and should be reopened. I think if this road reopened, it will bring a great life back to this area. Since the Bahamas Oil Refining Company International Limited began its scholarship program in 1991, it has funded over $150,000 in scholarships annually, along with continuing its support of the Kettering University Educational Experience Co-op Program, which allows students to spend their first four years alternating three-month semesters, attending class on campus, and then working for their co-op employers like Borco. 18-year-old Hilniqua Gibson, who is a sophomore at Kettering University studying mechanical engineering, is currently employed at Borco. While some lucky young person will walk away with a luxury vehicle later this month when the winners of the Frank's Ice Cream Bible competition are announced. The quiz was held over the weekend and now the heat is on. 
Hundreds of young people between the ages of 2 and 25 years took up the Frank's Ice Cream Challenge once again and spent most of their summer break studying the Word of God. This past weekend, they were able to participate in the Bible quiz at various locations. Owner of Frank's Ice Cream, Frank Alton, says the program, now into its 14th year, has grown tremendously. We are also welcoming a few other islands, and in that process, we have the other islands involved with it. Uh, we were surprised this year, 8 Mile Rock, we had a big turnout in that area. Uh, that determination, folks just determined to go after something and uh, just for them to open that Bible. Alton believes teaching young people godly principles is a critical component in the fight against crime. They will think twice before they do something stupid and that's what it's all about given back to the kids whilst they can. You cannot bend the rod when it's too late. It's just too late for too straight. So we got to get them now. Get them whilst they're young and just stick with it and keep them in the program. He says he has big plans for the summer program going forward. I'm looking for leaders, you know, people to run our country, take us to another level. And right now, since the program start, I have a young man who all about in America preaching because of the same small beginning and uh, they are the things that uh, give me strength and energy to go on. I have testimony from people who kids was behind in school and after they start studying the Bible, still dealing with it and getting into the Word, the grades improve all around. So we get in our Bahamas from this craziness of E to A and B. And we can do it, and the only way we can do it is through God's word. The grand prize is a 2004 Jaguar, and there are lots of cash prizes. The winners will be announced on August 24th at the Grand Lucayan Resort at 4 p.m. And that's a look at news, but don't go away. Sports is up next with Ricardo Lightborn. Hey everybody and welcome to Sports and Mercado Live. And this one tonight is for my college bodyguard, Jan Point in and there, New Providence who's celebrating, and my high school bodyguard for my kids, that is Tiffany Sweeting Smith here in Grand Bahama. Well, every day the Grand Bahama Golden Eagles Track Club folks has taken a self-help initiative. The help is for their coach, Dwayne Jennings. Track and field season is winding down, but for many of the athletes of the Grand Bahama Power Eagles track and field team, it's not been business as usual. You see, their coach, Dwayne Jennings, has been in the hospital since May of this year, recovering from a stroke. Now the Eagles family is planning something for Saturday. Well, Ricky Seymour says it's important because what they're trying to do is to help his family and get him back here on Grand Bahama. Coach Jennings in um, May of this year, uh, he had suffered a, a, a stroke. And as a result of that, uh, he lost both of his kidneys and uh, some sight in one of his uh, in both of his eyes, and and uh, also the left side is basically immo immobile at this time. So the cost is now mounting, and so you're trying to assist as best you can. When they went into Nassau, uh, his improvement was not immediate, and as a result. Uh, a myriad of tests had to be run and as a result of that uh, the family had to sign a number of commitment letters. Uh, uh, right now we're not quite sure of the figure but uh, a, a conservative estimate puts the figure at around twenty thousand dollars at this time. It's quiet now at the Grand Bomber Sports Complex but on Saturday it's going to be very busy with the run walk and also the south out. The family of Dwayne Jennings is appealing to all of you guys to come out and support the event on Saturday so that Coach Jennings can finally get out of New Providence and get back here on Grand Bahama. To everyone that prayed, give words of encouragement and visit him and continues to visit him in the hospital, we say thank you. Today, we are asking that everyone that can attend or financially support us this Saturday, August 16th, at the Fun Run Walkathon, please do so and support us as we raise funds to assist in meeting his current medical expenses and bringing him back home to Freeport. Again, thank you for your prayers, support, and generosity. So please help us. So please help us help my brother, Coach Dwayne Jennings, race to recovery.
and Grand Bahama, they want you to make sure that you do help out again. That's early Saturday morning, signs out for him, 7 o'clock, starting at the GB Sports Complex and ending there as well. Well, play continues at the ITF uh, Junior International Tennis Under-16 Championship in El Salvador. The girls are main draw. Aisha Shepard defeated uh, CD uh, Melendez of Puerto Rico, 6-2 and 2. She's into the round of 16. Gary Alazola of uh, Honduras, she'll play in the next round. Lauren Dexon, not that happy. She, in turn, lost to Ashley uh, Monte, 6-1 and 1. And in the consolation games, uh, Shatanya Mystic also. Uh, she, in turn, will play Emma Tercel of Trinidad. And the boys' consolation, well, O'Neill Mortimer got a win. He defeated uh, Timothy Davis of Trinidad, 6-2 uh, and 7-5. But the boys, Bradley Flowers, lost his uh, match to Ahmad as well, 6-2 and 2. Justin Thomas losing also to Thomas, 6-4 uh, and 4. Anna Thomas also and Ryan they're losing them as well to Ryan Thomas, six love and two. So they're having a rough time now, but they'll be okay. Now, if you are a softball buff like I am, the Grand Bahama Softball Association has some scores they want us to pass on to you as far as slow pitch. Immigration enforces over the BUT Bulldogs uh, 8 to 4 in co ed affair. The Port Authority regulators, they did the Grand Lucayan Mixers 7 6. Pats Uniform Reds, they shout out Kelly Space Setters 8 0 in the Junior Grand Crushers Day bag of those uh, BUT Bulldogs 14 9. On the men's side of things, the Hugo Braves, they blasted folks, the Gateway Travelers 24 1. And the Pats Uniform over the uh, Travelers of Gateway 23 9. And on the diamond tonight, got a couple of fast pitch games. Igmar Rock takes on the port side Flyers. Ladies opener set for seven. Arising Curries and Elnet XL. Well played. Well, he says he'll be there to see his team play tonight. Should be fun. Well, Bahamian heavyweight boxer Shimmer Tank Williams, folks, will be back in the squared circle in October. You see, the big fella has actually uh, contracted uh, to showdown with Joseph Parker in New Zealand. And uh, thanks, Tank says that he's got a good possibility that he's going to be holding his training camp here in Grand Bahama in preparation for that fight. He says it's been a while since Grand Bahama has actually hosted any kind of a training camp. The last time any uh, professional boxing camp was held in Grand Bahama was in 1981 when Trevor Burbick uh, trained here before going to Nassau and defeating Muhammad Ali in his last fight. Uh, so, you know, that, that's uh, actually uh, a big deal and it would actually shed the light here on Grand Bahama and many other uh, professional fighters that are currently preparing for fights now and in the future could also see Grand Bahama as a viable destination. I mean, we got eight, uh, miles and miles of white sandy beaches to run in. We have facilities here and even if we need to erect a facility in Lukaya, it would be quite easy to erect a facility to house a 20-foot boxing ring, heavy bags, etc. And I got to say to my good bodyguard down there in Nassau, Jan Poitier, congratulations, Speedy Pie. The girls in college, yep, you kept them all away. <laughs> That's a look at sport.